Hello, and welcome back to the ICE doc. This is Tamaris Baronis, and here's another lecture on perioperative and critical care transthoracic echo. In today's presentation, we will talk about the fractional area change, which is a simple method to estimate the ejection fraction. We'll talk about which view to use and how to make measurements. The fractional area change is measured at the parastinal short axis view with focus on the mid papillary view of the left ventricle. And as you see here in this video clip, we're in the mid papillary view since the papillaries are right here. I will also include the link in the description if you wish to refresh your memory on how to get the parastinal short axis view. One of the biggest limitations of the fractional area change when it comes to estimating ejection fraction is that it assesses contractility in only one plane at the mid papillary level. So if you have severe regional motion abnormality in the apical or the basal levels, that would overestimate the ejection fraction. Let's make some measurements. First, you need to find a good mid papillary view. Then you go on your ultrasound, you select the measure button, and under the generic tab, you will find the area trace. When you're measuring the fractional area change, you want to exclude the papillary muscles. You also want to stay as close to the endocardium as possible. So what you're doing when you're measuring the fractional area change is that you measure the difference between the area at the end of diastole all the way to the end of systole. And I'm going to show you an equation in the next slide how to calculate it. So in this case, the examiner found the end of diastole, measured the area, and now they're measuring the end of systole. And as you see, they're not including the papillary muscles. Perfect. This is the equation that I was referring to earlier. It may seem overwhelming at first, but it's actually a fairly simple equation. It basically tells you the fractional area change is equal to the left ventricular and diastolic area. So that's the trace of the left ventricle at the mid papillary level at the end of diastole minus the left ventricular and systolic area which is again the trace at the end of systole over the left ventricular and diastolic area, which is what you started with, times 100. And the result is going to be as a percentage. Let's use the image that we measured to calculate the fractional area change. So earlier we found the end diastolic area to be 17.7 and the end systolic area to be 9.2. So using the equation that we just spoke about, we can calculate the fractional area change. So we have the left ventricular end diastolic area, 17.7, minus the left ventricular end systolic area, which is 9.2, divided by the end diastolic area, which is 17.7, times 100. And if you do this math, you'll come up with 48%. So is this normal or is it abnormal? Well, this table shows you the normal values. So anything more than 35% is normal. If you have less than 35%, then you have a reduced ejection fraction. And this concludes the lecture on the fractional area change to estimate ejection fraction. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you check out our website, YouTube channel, and follow us on Twitter to stay updated when new videos come out. If you like the lectures, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and share.